Hi, and welcome to the first video on Wars of Napoleon. In this short walkthrough, we will introduce you to the basic concepts of the game by doing a few turns of a simple scenario. Once you'll master the ropes, you'll find the grand campaign to be much easier to approach. Wars of Napoleon is a turn-based strategy game in which you play any of seven major nations. The game comes with three scenarios and two campaigns. The Waterloo scenario will let you command the French, or the British, or the Prussian, and allies in a focused game. This scenario, Son of Austerlitz, has a bigger scope as you have to win against the Austrians and the Russians over several months, or on the contrary, you need to stop the advance of the powerful French army. This scenario is the one you will play with its medium size. It's the 1806 campaign, which the French player has to win a decisive victory against Prussia. As Prussia, you need to resist the best you can. Now, this campaign starts in August 1805, and the French are poised to strike Austria with a huge scope and a lot of diplomacy. All countries are included, and you can choose any among seven. This is another campaign that starts in January 1805 and is the only real chance for chance to invade England. Try it if you want to try a sea invasion. But right now we will go to 1806 campaign, where we show the basic game basics in movement and battles. Let's start by choosing the French side and see where we get at our disposal. Now, as you can see here, the map is split into regions. The mouse highlights the region you are checking and a tooltip gives you additional information. There is a lot of forest in the area and movement will be difficult, especially so close to winter. Most of the French units, collectively known as La Grande Armée, are in Bavaria. That we can see in blue by using the military filter. The shortcut for this particular key on your keyboard is going to be 1. Interesting. If we take a look over here, we actually have a few minor allies, like Nassau in bright green or Hessen in dark green. These colors suggest that these countries are actually quite peaceful and kind to us. To the north, there is also a Prussian army commanded by Rochelle. As you see in the tooltip, we have some details about the force, but not everything is known, as our intelligence is far from being complete. We would need to approach a cavalry units for scouting. We will probably do better by sending an entire force against them. We should not, though, disperse too much our efforts as the main thrust would be against our objectives. I'll highlight that now using the filter about objectives whose shortcut is the numerical key of three. Berlin is a very important objective for the French in this scenario, and that's no surprise. Dresden and Leipzig, owned by Sa Saxony, an ally of Prussia, are also important. We will now plan our moves on the map accordingly. But first, let's see who we have at our chain of command. Clicking on Bernadotte on the map, we have access to details about his first corps. As you can see, some of his units have a name in gold, like the 3rd Division. Now, these are powerful combat units. If you hover the mouse over a number in gray, which represents the combat power, you can get even more details about the unit. And the same can be done for the second and first division. You can get the total combat power of your stack units here, which is in this case is 849. We can make a brief tour of our forces, first Marat, then Jerome Bonaparte, the younger brother in the emperor, and finally Ilane. Within a given region, you can reposition your forces freely by using the drag and drop method, like we're doing here for Jerome and Ney. This is convenient when you have several forces in one region. As you can see, Marat is not alone in Schweinfurt, so for ease of display, we'll reposition him in Davout in different places. As you can see, you can click on the two tabs at the bottom of the screen to select either force. Now, about Napoleon. If you click on his stack, you see many others highlighted in red. This is because Napoleon commands all of the corps of the Grand Armée and has the other leaders subordinate to him. His stack is not particularly powerful. In fact, he has only a single combat unit, but he will give tremendous bonuses to other formations. Now, it's time to plan our moves. We'll send Lene against Rochelle to the north. This is done by selecting his stack and using the drab and drop method, releasing it over the destination region. You don't have to move one region at a time. With Davout, we will, in one go, drop the leader to his destination four regions away. Now, if you made a mistake, you can delete one leg of the move by pressing the delete key. If you want to delete all movement in one go, you can instead drag and drop the leader in a starting region. Let us plan our move with Lanay. 
but with another method. You can instead drag and drop, use alt click on a destination region. Use the method that suits you best, or that you prefer. Now on to the other stacks. Murat will do some reconnaissance in Iena region. Bernadotte is sent to Aue. Other cores will follow at their own pace, knowing that they can help others from an adjacent region. Algaris 7th cores and other units have a more centered position, ready to help. Supply trains will go to the charming city of Beirut. And finally, the Emperor. And this completes our first turn, as our allies have already been set up. The red stripe over their counter means they can't be moved right now and will be available later. We're ready to proceed to the next turn.